All right, boys, let's uh, move on ahead now to our preview of this weekend's UFC Fight Night on Drage versus Blanchfield. It's going down Friday, uh, February 18th. No, I'm sorry, Saturday, February 18th at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're going to talk about, break down, and pick up and pick uh, four fights on this card. But before we do, are there any other fights or fighters that you guys want to spotlight for our listeners? I'll do one. Um, this is a bullshit card. This might be the worst UFC card of all time, if I'm being perfectly honest. Like, there is nothing appealing on this card. Uh, I will point out, uh, I'm not even sure how you say his first name. I think it's Kusain. Um Kusain Askabov is debuting mm-hmm. um, on the undercard against Jamal Emmers. This dude is 23-0. and uh, He is from Chechnya. Hasn't fought in like three years. Had hype on him. And then I think was supposed to be fighting in the UFC a couple times and had things fall through for different reasons. Now he finally is. Um, he's a career bantamweight. For some reason, he is moving up to featherweight. I don't know if maybe in these three years he just got bigger. He was young. He's now 28, so he was like 25. So maybe he just got bigger. But anyway, 23-0, and 0, which is a hell of a record. And he is debuting against Jamal Emmers. So that is someone to watch. But beyond that, I don't really have much on this card to highlight for you. Okay. Uh, anything else, Omar? Uh, not really. AJ Fletcher is on the card. Um, he's an interesting guy. But, uh, yeah, I mean, to be fair, on paper, there is nothing very attractive about this card. But... It's very possible that, you know, once we take this card out for dinner on Saturday and we get to know it a little bit better, it, you know, it might just prove to have been a fantastic night out. Uh, That's what we're hopeful for. But uh, right now the profile is not looking too appealing. Yeah. I will say one more because we said we're not even going to do the co-main, right? No. The Zach Powell one? Yeah, so I'll I'll just touch on that. The co Again, the, the order of this card doesn't even make sense. Zach Pauga and Jordan Wright could be the opener, and it's the co-main. It's just everything is random as shit. But I will touch on that one also because you have Pauga, who was the runner-up in the heavyweight uh, division of the most recent Tough. He has always been a light heavyweight. He just moved up for the sake of being on Tough. So he moves down to light heavyweight now after getting knocked out by Muhammad Usman. And interestingly enough, Jordan Wright, a career middleweight, is moving up too light heavyweight to try to kind of save his career. So they will be clashing, which just kind of interesting because um, they actually on paper are the same size, like height, reach and everything. So it'd be interesting to see those two guys in there. And uh, my guess is that it's not going the full 15 in that one. Additionally, if you, those of you who listened to last week uh, at our <laughs> semi obsession in thighs, William Knight is on this card. You definitely, definitely check out that man's thighs because that shit will kill somebody too. I need to see William Knight make weight. Like he, I think he weighed in for his last fight at two sixty or like two fifty something, if I recall, um, because it was at heavyweight because of whatever I don't even remember notice or something. And like that man's gonna get back down to two hundred five. Like I don't, he is he is an interesting human. I, I got to see one it of those. Each one of those thighs has got to weigh like 85 pounds each. Like, mm-hmm. Christ. Easy. Okay. Uh, first fight we're going to break down and pick is going down in the light heavyweight division between Ovens St. Pru and Philip Lintz. Uh, let's see. OSP, 39 year old out of Knoxville, Tennessee. He is 26 and 16 as a professional with 12 knockouts. Add eight subs to that. Uh, however many of those subs are Von Flew chokes, which he is famous for. He is coming off of a split decision win over Shogun Hua back in May of 2022. Uh, Philip, how do you say it? Linz or Linz? Felipe. But how do you say his last name? Linz. It is Linz, yeah. Monstro. 37-year-old out of Natal, Brazil. He is also coming off of a win uh, back in April of 2022, and he's 15 and five as a pro. 
Uh, eight knockouts, four subs on his record. Mark, throw it over to you first. Give us your take. So OSP is actually a pretty significant dog here. He's plus 175. Um, Felipe Lins is minus 215. I think that's wild. I think this fight feels a lot more like a coin toss to me. So if I was touching this, it would definitely be on the OSP side. I don't have a great read on this fight. Um, Linz is a guy who people have always kind of liked, but I just have never been terribly impressed by. Um, whereas OSP obviously had his time where he was a factor, but I feel like he is kind of starting to look worse. Like he kind of squeaked by Shogun recently, who obviously is a ghost of himself at this point. He just lost to Ihor Potieria. So, I'm having a hard time reading this one. I think I am going to go with OSP. I won't be shocked at all if, if Linz does beat him. Um, mm-hmm. But OSP is should be like more mobile in there. I do think he carries more one-shot power. And he's got the better grappling, too. And Linz kind of likes to lean on the grappling at times if he doesn't like how it's going in the striking. So... I don't know that he can do that here. So if I got to pick someone, I'll, I'll go with the dog. Give, give me OSP. Um, I'll say by submission in round two. Maybe even like a club and sub scenario. Okay. Oma? <laughs> OSP has struck me as somebody who is is essentially there for the paycheck. There doesn't really seem to be... An, an ambition for him when it comes to a trajectory in the UFC. You know, he's there, he shows up, he's professional, he makes weight. You know what I mean? I'm sure he trains and all this other stuff, but it just seems like another day in the office rather than trying to do something, if that makes sense. Um, and I think a lot of times his performances show it, and I don't think it allows him to go that extra mile in a lot of, in a lot of situations. Um, I think once he gets hurt, it's very difficult for him, whether it's to actually come back or want to come back. Um, And so it does make it very difficult for me to pick him in a lot of situations. I don't necessarily have a lot of confidence in Linz. And so for that reason, I'm going to go with OSP, but it really could go either way. I I am super surprised at the line. Um, But yeah. I, I do definitely think it'll go either way. If, if I had to pick one, I'll go with OSP by a split decision. I agree with your assessment. I think OSP uh, OSP <clears throat> OSP is at a phase of his career, 39 years old. He's pretty far from, from a title shot. Uh, a lot of things would have to fall into place miraculously for him to get there. So at this point, he's a former title challenger at a 205 and, uh, sort of a gatekeeper at this point i think of him um yeah it's fair he's good i mean he wins one he loses a couple he wins a couple he loses one at this point um i don't even think think he's an appropriate gatekeeper though because i mean like he lost to, to to jamal hill right jamal hill is now the champion of the of the light heavyweight division but then he also loses to tanner bozer yeah like well that was at heavyweight though that's a little different he got laid out. Yeah, but he went up a division. But he constantly goes up and down. Like, I don't want to give yeah, him any credit. Does. Lately, he's been going that's up why and he, down. That's what he does. You fucked up, son. <laughs> well, uh, OSP's a guy who at one time, at the light heavyweight division, man, was a stud. Yeah, uh, agreed. The mighty have fallen. At this point in his career, uh, I just don't trust him. So I'm, I'm going to take... Felipe Lins by knockout. I'll say round two. Okay, moving on. In the women's bantamweight division, Lena Landsberg taking on Maida Bueno Silva. Landsberg, the 40 year old out of uh, Malmo, Sweden. 10 and 7 as a pro. Uh, four knockouts, no subs. She has also never been submitted. Uh, she's looking to badly to get back into the win column. She is riding a three-fight losing streak coming into this Saturday night. Maida Bueno Silva, the 31-year-old out of Brazil. Chitara is her nickname. Nine and two is a pro with one draw. 
six submission victories. She's coming off back-to-back wins uh, coming into this weekend. Omar, let me throw it over to you first this time. Give us your take of uh, Bueno Silva taking on Lena Landsberg. Uh, definitely an interesting situation here. Lena Landsberg coming off of a few losses and uh, Buena Silva coming off of a win that started off a little sketchy, uh, but it was a quick win, a good solid submission win uh, from her. I just don't know how sold I am on her. Uh, Landsberg is scrappy, but she's not the most well-rounded fighter i would say um i don't know i don't know if she's the best person when it comes i i think she's very far from the best person when it comes to putting it all together on the night of the fight um she she sticks to the fundamentals but she's not very solid in those either Uh um and so there leaves a lot of room for buena silva to capitalize uh on lena landsberg um I think it's a scrappy fight. I don't think it'll be the most technical. Uh, I also don't think it'll be the prettiest fight. But uh, I do think it will be scrappy. And I think uh, Bueno Silva will take it. Unanimous decision. Okay. Mark? All right. So uh, Bueno Silva is a big favorite here. She's minus 480. Lena Landsberg is plus 360. Uh, Interestingly enough, this is the only fight on the entire card other than the main event that features ranked fighters. Um, the elbow queen Landsberg has been on a downward slide of late. I don't think that changes here. She likes to fight in close where she can use those elbows. Um, I think that bites her because it gives Silva the chance to bring this to the mat. If she so chooses, she's definitely powerful enough to drag Landsberg down. Plus she can hang in firefight type moments. If any of those do pop off or if that's the route Silva decides to take, but I think this thing eventually hits the mat. Uh, we've seen Silva sub girls like Jillian Robertson, like Stephanie Egger. So I don't think there's any reason she cannot do that to Elena Landsberg. So give me uh, Bueno Silva by round two sub. I agree. I think uh, Landsberg has been sliding, and, and uh, Silva is a bad matchup for her, uh, given the way that she strikes, like Mark alluded to. Uh, and the fact that Buena Silva is a real submission threat, so I'm going to take uh, Myra Buena Silva by submission. I will also say round two. Okay, moving up to the men's. Uh, f- what is this lightweight? Yes, lightweight. Lightweight. Yeah, mm-hmm. lightweight. Jim Miller taking on Alexander Hernandez. Jim Miller really needing no introduction to MMA diehards. The 39 year old. Out of Sparta, New Jersey, his record stands at 35 and 16 with one no contest, six knockouts, 19 submission wins on the record of Mr. Miller. He is riding a three-fight win streak, most recently getting another sub over the other legend, Donald Cerrone. Uh, A fellow opponent of Alexander Hernandez, uh, the Great Ape is his nickname, the 30-year-old out of San Antonio, Texas. 13-6 13-6 and six as a pro, six knockouts, two submissions, five decision wins. Uh, he is looking, though, to get back into the win column, coming off back-to-back losses coming into this Saturday night. Mark, let me kick it over to you first. Give us your take and your pick of Jim Miller versus Alexander Hernandez. So this is such a hard one to read because Hernandez is taking it on very short notice. He's coming back up to lightweight after he just moved to featherweight. Um, so honestly, from the time this was made, I, I kind of had a vibe that I felt like Hernandez may end up taking it. And I thought I would be taking the dog in saying that. And he is a minus 240 favorite, which is a bit wild to me. Jim Miller is plus 190 as the underdog. Um, so I don't know what you think of that, but, um, as I said, short notice for, Hernandez, he is not all that far removed from all that damage he took against Billy Q. So that's a factor as well. Um, Back up to lightweight after kind of changing his body to become a featherweight. Granted, I don't think it's a true return. I think he kind of just saw this opportunity to fight Jim Miller and was like, yeah, I can make 155 now that I kind of got smaller. Let me get a chance to fight Jim Miller, which I fully get. Um, 
and we do get a pretty fun fight here now. Uh, Jim Miller's in a groove lately. He looks really good. And I'm struggling with this pick. Alexander Hernandez, I thought, looked so good early in his fight with Billy Q. Like, I was really impressed. Um, but Billy Q was able to endure it and take over as the fight went into round two and beyond. Now it's Jim Miller, and he's kind of a guy who can do the same type of things. He can take some early round one troubles and endure it and then turn the fight in, in a lot of different ways. So for that reason, I'm kind of like, ah, I think Jim Miller can do this, but I don't know why. From the time this fight was made through now, I can't shake this feeling that Alexander Hernandez is going to beat Jim Miller. I'm kind of just picturing him being pulling off a fight where he's like a little quicker and a little more in and out and kind of scrambly enough that Jim Miller can't change it with the grappling. So I'll say it's a close one, but I'm going to say Hernandez 29-28. Omar. I think Alex Hernandez hurts Jim Miller early. Uh, wow. I think Jim Miller, I think Jim Miller survives. And I think Jim Miller takes a leg in round two uh, submission. I'm surprised that the odds are this wide. Me too. I'm Same. very I find this to be a very tough fight to pick, mostly because especially of, uh, with the short notice. Because of three three reasons: because of the age and veteran status and experience of Jim Miller, versus the relative inexperience of Alexander Hernandez, and the recent struggles of Alexander Hernandez. I feel like Donald Cerrone just completely took Hernandez's juju away from him. <laughs> and he has been up and down ever since. And yep. as talented as, as Alexander Hernandez seems, Jim Miller is a fucking dog. And one of the toughest guys you'll ever see in the octagon. <laughs> I had the opposite feeling of Mark. I could be very wrong because I kind of root for Alexander Hernandez. I want to see him be really good. Um, I have the opposite feeling, though. I have a feeling that Jim Miller is going to take his soul and possibly we'll see <laughs> Alexander Hernandez exiting the UFC after this. I think. Wow, wow. I think Jim Miller, yes, sure. I think he can weather a storm or two from Hernandez in round one. But I think he's just too tough to go away. And I think that he's going to have a way better gas tank than Hernandez. And he's just he's going to have so many tools. And I'm going to say that Jim Miller is going to find a submission in round three. I think Hernandez does well outside of the UFC, if we're being honest, man. Sure. Yeah. Sure. He All right. Main event mind. time. Very excited to talk about this fight with you two. In the women's flyweight division, Jessica Andrade versus Aaron Blanchfield. Man, oh, man. So, originally, it was supposed to be Blanchfield versus who? Tyler Santos. Tyler Santos, that's right. Santos is out. And look who steps in, but Jessica Bate Estaca Andraj. A, 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 a lady who we were just mentioning in the conversation of greatest female fighters of all time. Stepping up to face the rising Aaron Blanchfield. So, let me set this up real quick. Aaron Coldblooded Blanchfield, the challenger, not, no title on the line, sorry. 23-year-old uh, from New Jersey. Let me say that again. She is 23 years old. Uh, certainly one of the youngest uh, competitors on the entire UFC roster. She is 10-1 and one as a pro, though, in spite of her young age. She stands at 5 feet 4 inches tall. Of her 10 wins, she has... Two knockouts, three submissions to add to that. Uh, of her one loss, it was a decision win back in 2019 in Invicta against Tracy Cortez. Loss to Tracy Cortez via split decision in Invicta. Uh, she's gone undefeated since. Like I said, she's 10-1. and one. She's undefeated so far in the UFC, 4 no in the UFC, 50% uh, finish rate. And she will now be standing across from Jessica Andrade, the 31-year-old out of Brazil, 24-9 as a professional, nine knockouts, eight submissions. Uh, she stands at five feet two inches tall. Uh, for 24 wins, oh, I already said nine, nine knockouts, eight subs. She's riding a three-fight win streak coming into this weekend, uh, winning over 
Cindy Calvillo, Amanda Lemos, and most recently beating the brakes off of Lauren Murphy. <laughs> uh, Mark, let's start with you for this main event. Give us your take and your pick of Blanchfield versus Andrade. I love this fight. Uh, it is so intriguing. It, it definitely at least attempts to save the rest of this card. Uh, the odds are very close, even closer than I kind of thought they would be. Andrade is minus 135. Blanchfield is plus 115, so it is nearly a pick em. Some sites it practically is. Uh, Blanchfield is two inches taller, and she has a six-inch reach advantage, which is bigger than I imagined. So that's a lot. Andrade is stepping in on one week's notice, as we know, which is very short. Um, I love what we've seen from Aaron Blanchfield. We have all been on Aaron Blanchfield. We've all been impressed. We've all been calling her as as someone who may break out in, in the year of 2023. Obviously, that timeline has been accelerated as she jumps into a fight with Jessica Andrade out of the blue, where if she wins this fight, she is probably calling for a title shot, and rightfully so. Yep. Um, so we're going to see. She's 23 years old. It's happening quick. She has only had four UFC fights. Granted, she was an Invicta for a couple before that. Uh, and if there was ever a time to beat Jessica Andrade, it's when you get her on one week notice. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I do think Blanchfield is someone who gets better every single time we see her. I, I think that she's still developing. I think she has much more room to go to grow. Excuse me. Um, but the thing that gives me pause is that we look at who Aaron, Aaron Blanchfield has beat in the UFC, Sarah Alpar, Miranda Maverick, who's good, but not special. Just JJ not Aldrich, harsh. same answer. Uh, and Molly McCann, Jessica Andrade would violently murder all four of those girls violently on the, murder. S- on the same night. <laughs> yes. So, while I think it's possible we could see a day where Aaron Blanchfield is this good, and I think she has the tools to be this good, that she belongs in fights that are on this level, I can't pick her to beat a Jessica Andrade when I've only seen her fight the people that I've seen her fight. Like, obviously, you you can see the skills are there, but it's just such a different depth of water that she is going to be swimming in with a Jessica Andrade. The the strength of Andrade, the speed of Andrade, the comfort in the striking of Andrade, the power that is in every single shot. And who knows? Yeah, Andrade, as much as she's scrambling and strong, she can be held down. We, we've seen it. She can be out grappled. Um, Valentina even went that route in her fight to try to not not mess around with the Andrade power so much. And Blanchfield is is a grappler who's capable of doing that. So it, it's on the table. But I just respect the game of Jessica Andrade too much and respect the power that she carries too much. And, and I think at some point in the first three rounds, she clips Blanchfield in an exchange and, and puts her down. Um, I will say round two TKO where she clips her, finishes with some ground and pound, and, and gets out of there. Okay, Omar. I love a good story. I would love Aaron Blanchfield to be Jessica Andras just because of the story that would have been told as a result. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's a hell of an order for Blanchfield to go up against Jessica Andrade at this point in her career. I could see the argument as to why it's warranted. Uh, her performances have been fantastic. Jessica Andrade taking it on short notice. Um, but Jessica Andrade has that tested, proven willpower. We've seen her go through the championship rounds. We've seen her fight the champions. We've seen her dominate the elite. Um, and like Mark said, we haven't really seen Aaron Blanchfield hasn't been given the opportunity to do that up until this point. So I think it's very possible for Aaron Blanchfield to win this fight. I think there are definitely avenues for her to do that. Um, 
But I think more realistically, I think Andrade goes in there and I, I think she clips her early, to be honest. Even earlier than Mark's guess, I'm going to go with KO round one. But I will be thrilled if Aaron Blanchfield somehow wins this fight. <laughs> That's the thing, man, is that, and this is at her, <clears throat> at, at her bigger weight at 125. Yep. And she, you know, it's short notice, so she's probably doesn't have a ton to cut. But even still, man, Andrade is a killer. I mean, she has, her last five fights uh, has, have all been finishes. She KO slammed Rose. She KO'd Chukagian. She TKO'd Calvillo. She submish she uh, triangle choked Amanda Lemos, and she she did not actually get the finish. But Lauren Murphy was <laughs> arguably her her most battered opponent, maybe ever. So I'm a little worried for Aaron Blanchfield, to be honest. Uh, uh, I, I kind of wanted anybody else to be mashed up with her for this fight. Um, I think her, her her youth, even though she's probably you know she's going to be the bigger, taller person in there. I mean, Andrade. We were talking about this before the show began, man. Andrade is a fire hydrant, and I think uh, I think that Blanche feels in for a rude awakening and a and a serious heat check. I mean, it could be very much like how when Yair ran into Frankie Edgar. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. They, they just, you might just need it because now look at Yair. Aaron Blanchfield loses one fight to somebody elite like Andrade, comes back and becomes an absolute monster for the remainder of her career. Totally possible as well. And 100% I, possible. I'm going to go with the same take as Omar. I'm going to say that uh, Andrade, late in round one, I think he's going to deliver a lot of punishment to Blanchfield on the feet. And we're going to get a TKO for uh, Andrade round one. But towards the end of round one, not right away. Right. But, man, wouldn't it be amazing uh, if fucking Blanchfield went out there and just, like, schooled her on the ground? or like, Oh, it'd be incredible. It'd be incredible. I, honest, I'm a bit surprised the UFC made this fight because yeah. you have Blanchfield coming up looking amazing. She's 23 years old. She's possibly the future of this division. And first they had her with Tyler Santos, which makes sense. It's like a fellow grappler. She's not quite as dominant as an Andrade. And it was like, here we go. This is the test. And if she lost to Santos, it was not going to be by, like, bludgeoning. For them to say, okay, Santos fell out. Who can we get? And Jessica Andrade raised her hand and them say, yeah, let's do that. I'm surprised because Me too. you run the risk of, of an out cold Aaron Blanchfield, which is not what you're really looking to have right now. I'm honestly not super surprised. This fight kind of came together under very short notice, right? Look at it. Look, look at the fact that it's a headliner. This card was not I guess great. they had to save an event because it's the worst card that ever list lived. And maybe they didn't exactly. have their options. And if Jessica Andrade even put her name in the hat or they asked her or whatever, it's 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 a spot. It makes it makes wanting to see that fight interesting. I mean, we want to yeah. see it. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. do wonder if I they were like, can't wait. Oh, can't wait oh, can it. we get anybody else besides Andrade? No? All right. I bet go. there's not really a line out the door to fucking fight Aaron Blanchfield. That girl is wrecking people right now. Yeah, maybe. She only has one maybe. loss, and it's a split decision loss. Yeah. 